Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Scott, and today we're painting the Centaur Avatara for the Spire's Army in Conquest The Last Argument of Kings. This is a pretty crazy model, so let's go ahead and dive into how I painted it. Before we can paint this model, we need to prime it, so we're going to spray the entire model using Wraithbone Spray Primer from Citadel. The first thing we're going to do in this project is we're going to take Ion Rack Skin and we're going to use this as the base color for all of the skin on the model. This includes the legs, the underbelly, the arms, and the head of the model. Once we've applied that color to all the skin, we're going to take Athonian Camo Shade and we're going to do a light wash of this over all of the skin on the model. Once that shade is dried, we're going to take Pallid Witch Flesh, and you've got two options here. You can either dry brush this over all the flesh, or you can manually highlight the most raised surfaces of the muscles. In the end, I went through and did the manual highlighting method. Once we're finished with that highlighting, we're going to take Carabert Crimson, and we're going to apply this at the base of the legs, and anywhere that we feel that the skin needs to look either worn out or like there's more blood flowing to that part of the body. And we're going to use water to thin this out so that it transitions and blends smoothly with the white. Now that we've finished with the flesh, we're going to begin working on some of the armor panels on the model. We're going to begin with Jokero Orange, and we're going to base all of the armor plates that look a little bit more organic on the model using this color. Once we're happy with that orange color, we're going to take Karaberg Crimson and we're going to do a heavy wash of this over all of the orange. Once we've allowed that shade to dry, we're going to take Rakarth Flesh and we're going to dry brush this over all of the orange panels. With that all done, we're going to take Elysian Green and we're going to paint this on all the remaining armor panels on the model. With that green in place, we're going to take Agrax Earthshade and we're going to wash this over all of the green panels on the model, but we don't want to go too heavy here because we don't want to darken down the armor too much. Once that shade is dried, we're going to bring back Elysian Green and we're going to dry brush this over all the armor panels. This is just to bring back some of the original green color that we had. We'll do a second layer of dry brushing, this time using Ogren Camo, and we're only focusing on getting the edges of the armor with this layer of dry brushing. Now that we're done with all the armor, we're going to begin working on some of the smaller details on the model. We're going to begin with the leather straps that are on the side of the model, and we're going to base these using Baneblade Brown. With that tan color in place, we're going to take Agrax Earthshade and wash this over all of the leather straps. While that shade is drying, we're going to take Lead Belcher and we're going to use this to paint all of the trim and any of the metal details that are on the model. Now that the shade is dried, we're going to go back through and we're going to take Xandri Dust and dry brush this over all of the leather straps on the model. Our next step is to take Nuln Oil, and we're going to shade this over any parts that we painted with the Lead Belcher. Once that Nuln Oil has dried, we're going to take Stormhost Silver, and we're going to edge highlight all of the silver parts on the model. There are kind of some weird details on this model. At this point, we're going to take Morgast Bone, and we're going to paint this on all of the bones that are on the model, and this includes what appears to be a mouth, both on the front armor plate of the model and on the shield. 
Once we're happy with that bone color, we're going to take Contrast Skeleton Horde and we're going to lightly wash this over everywhere that we painted with the Morgast bone in the previous step. Once that contrast paint has dried, we're going to take Screaming Skull and we're going to layer this over all the raised surfaces on the bones of the model. Next, we're going to take Balthazar Gold and we're going to paint this on the handles of the swords, as well as any other details on the model that we feel should be copper. We're also going to take Skaven Blight Dinge, we're going to paint this on the hooves of the centaur. Next we'll take Mephiston Red and we're going to paint this on the plume of the model as well as any tassels or tabard bits that are hanging off of the model. With those colors in place, we're going to take Agrax Earthshade and we're going to wash all three of the previous colors that we just painted. Our final step on this project is to take Evil Sun Scarlet and we're going to use this to highlight all of the red parts of the model. And with that, we finished painting the Centaur Avatar. Thank you so much for watching today. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. I also want to extend a very special thank you to our channel members that make these videos possible. If you'd like to become a channel member, please consider hitting the join button below this video. As always, have an amazing day, and we'll catch you in the next one.